In this case presentation, Dr. Ripul Gandhi from the Miami Cancer Institute presents the clinical case of a 77-year-old woman with HCC who underwent Y90 radio embolization. During the treatment procedure, there was an iotrogenic complication involving dissection of the superior mesenteric artery and replaced right hepatic artery. But the Trinav infusion system allowed for safe Y90 delivery to the target tumor thanks to its reflux protection properties. Post-treatment imaging showed improved tumor perfusion compared to the standard microcatheter, which demonstrates how Trinav can be used to effectively deliver Y90, even in a complicated clinical case. Hi, my name is Ripo Gandhi. I'm an interventional radiologist at the Miami Cardiac and Vascular Institute, as well as the Miami Cancer Institute. I'm going to be presenting a case with the utilization of the TriNav device to improve perfusion in the setting of an iatrogenic complication. These are my disclosures. The patient I'm presenting is a 77-year-old woman with a history of liver cirrhosis secondary to NASH who presented with heartburn, decreased appetite, and weight loss. She denied any abdominal pain and did not have jaundice. Her past medical history was significant for type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and she also had an episode of hematemesis, which occurred about two months prior, but there was no further workup for that. The patient underwent cross-sectional imaging. You can see a CT scan here demonstrates an ill-defined 5.5 by 3.3 centimeter mass, which has mild, subtle arterial enhancement and demonstrates washout on the delayed phase imaging on the right. Also noted is portal vein thrombosis with cavernous transformation of the portal vein. These imaging findings are suggestive of HCC or hepatocellular carcinoma, but not diagnostic. So the patient underwent an MRI for further imaging follow-up. And this MRI demonstrates a geographic area of hypoenhancement on the parenchymal phase of the MRI with some degree of contrast washout and delayed capsular enhancement within predominantly segment six of the liver. I wanna bring your attention to the lower image on this uh, on the screen, which demonstrates diffusion-weighted images, which have restricted diffusion noted within the tumor, as well as within the portal vein. These imaging findings are compatible with inter intermediate probability for HCC, or LIRADS3. And therefore, in order to make a more definitive diagnosis for HCC, the patient underwent a biopsy, which was compatible with hepatocellular carcinoma. Liver function tests were normal, the patient had a child Pew score of A5 and had a normal ECOG performance status of zero. Of note, her alpha fetal protein was markedly elevated at almost 4,000. In terms of the management, patient underwent endoscopy, which demonstrated esophageal varices but no evidence of bleeding, and she underwent successful banding. She was presented at her multidisciplinary hepatobiliary tumor board and she had advanced hepatocellular carcinoma for the Barcelona Clinic Liver Cancer Staging System. She was initiated on river roxaban for anticoagulation given the presence of both portal vein tumor thrombus as well as some gland tumor thrombus. Standard therapy for advanced HCC is systemic therapy, and she was started on lenvatinib, and the decision was made to do Y90 therapy concomitantly. I do want to make a note, while atezolizumab and bevacizumab have become the standard of care for first-line treatment of advanced HCC. In this patient, it was deemed to be too high risk to give this combination therapy given the presence of prior variceal hemorrhage and the continued need for anticoagulation. Here's the patient's mapping angiogram. This is a replaced right hepatic artery, as you can see, arising from the SMA with good flow. This is a more selective uh, angiogram with a microcatheter within the replaced right hepatic artery. And you can see that there's some ill-defined neovascularity noted within the right hepatic lobe. Also noted is a prominent cystic artery, which is delineated by this red arrow. Cone beam CT performed with the angiogram of the right hepatic artery at the same location demonstrates opacification of this right hepatic lobe uh, with the tumor noted with ill-defined vascularity and some portal vein vascularity. But also noted is contrast filling of the cystic artery with contrast noted within the gallbladder wall, which is pretty uh, prominent. And this is just, you know, just some delayed stilled images, um, actually arterial phase imaging on the left and um, delayed phase imaging cone beam on the right. And you can see there's a quite prominent dense opacification of the gallbladder wall on both of these phases. 
So while I've done plenty of Y90 within the distribution of the cystic artery, this case gave me a little bit more concern given the relatively large cystic artery with very prominent flow noted both on the cone beam CT, which I showed, as well as a spec CT, which was performed after the mapping procedure. So a decision was made that we would actually place a temporary coil or plug within the cystic artery at the time of the Y90 to minimize the risk of radiation-induced cholecystitis. So we decided to place a sheath into the SMA with the plan to place two microcatheters through the sheath, one for delivery of the Y90 into the replaced right hepatic artery, and the second one to temporarily occlude the cystic artery. After advancing the sheath, we did an angiogram, and this was you know, very, very concerning uh, complication, as you can see. We have a flow-limiting dissection within the superior mesenteric artery with very little flow. There's also very little flow within the replaced right hepatic artery. So this was, you know, first thing that we asked ourselves, you know, what was the cause of this uh, dissection here? You know, I have clearly advanced many sheaths into the superior mesenteric artery. I've never had a problem with the dissection. Well, this patient was started on Linvatinib three weeks prior. And this is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And there have been reports of dissection due to the VEGF inhibition. This drug has also been known to cause hypertension especially within the early stages of the treatment cycle, and that may have contributed to the dissection as well. So what do we do now? Well, the number one thing we wanted to address, you know, how much flow was in this SMA as that, that was the most, you know, life, you know, threatening problem on the table. So we did a dedicated celiac angiogram. There was prominent flow within the pancreatic oduodenal collaterals with some flow into the SMA distally. It was not very robust flow. And therefore, we decided to anticoagulate this patient immediately. Conservative management clearly is not a good option for this patient with a flow-limiting dissection. Stent placement may also be considered. The second question I ask myself is, you know, is there a way to deliver this Y90 safely? Now, clearly, we could have rescheduled this patient for another day, given everything that was going on. Although we had this Y90 dose sitting on the table, we had this patient with an HCC, and we were trying to figure out, is there a safe way to deliver the Y90? Well, we certainly have utilized a trinav catheter, which is a anti-reflux catheter and which allows for pressure-enabled drug delivery in other cases. And we didn't see any reason why we couldn't utilize that device in this situation. So this is what the device looks like. The device has an atraumatic self-conforming tip, which is really en engineered well. And it actually really tracks well, which I really like about it. It tracks just as well as you know, a lot of the standard microcatheters which is surprising given the presence of this smart valve technology at the end of it. Um, and the catheter actually goes through your standard 035 or 038 diagnostic catheter. So you don't need a special catheter. Uh, the, the actual porous mesh within the device allows particles you know, less than 10 microns to pass through, but it's very strong and it prevents embolic reflux. So, at the time of the uh, Y90 here, we then and, you know, basically advanced this trinav catheter you know, in the distal right hepatic artery, and we did an angiogram here. And you can see that there's good perfusion to the right hepatic lobe without evidence of reflux of contrast despite this dissection. And what I, I wanted to kind of show you, you know, two comparisons here. We have a angiogram on the left, which was done with a standard microcatheter. And um, on the right, we have an angiogram with the trinav at the time of the Y90. Now, obviously, these are done at two different time settings, although the injection rates are very similar. And the cystic artery fills immediately and rapidly with the end hole microcatheter on the left, although there's more delayed filling of the cystic artery with the trinav catheter. And then when we performed a cone beam CT uh, at the time of the Y90 delivery through the trinav catheter, you see that there's good perfusion in the right hepatic lobe without any reflux. But also you see there's very minimal filling of the cystic artery, which is very different than the image that I showed previously, which showed very dense opacification of the cystic artery. This is a spec CT following Y90 administration via the trinav catheter, which shows good perfusion of the right hepatic lobe without evidence of non-target Y90 delivery. The trinav improved tumoral uptake and uh, also very important that there's very little perfusion noted to the gallbladder. There's improved perfusion to the tumor with the trinav compared to the standard microcatheter. Now, you know, this is not a complete apples and apples comparison. I'll, you know, I, I will admit that, you know, technetium MAA was utilized for the standard microcatheter mapping on the left and Y90 obviously uh, for the post Y90 delivery with the trinav. And they do have different characteristics, but nevertheless, um, you know, 
I've seen with this case and with many other cases that there is improved perfusion to the tumor with utilization of the TriNav catheter. Patient was anticoagulated both during and after the procedure, and she did actually have some mild abdominal discomfort and nausea the evening of the procedure. And certainly we were still concerned about, you know, how well the flow was distally. And we were worried that, you know, she could have developed bowel ischemia. We kept her overnight on a heparin drip, and she actually had resolution of her symptoms the following morning. We saw her in the clinic at one month follow-up, I'm, I'm sorry, one week follow-up, um, and the patient's symptoms were completely resolved, and she was asymptomatic as well. The patient returned at a one month follow up for treatment of a segment four uh, paddock artery with Y90. And you can see that there is you know, near complete healing of the dissection within the SMA, although there is some persistent narrowing at the origin of the replaced right hepatic artery. In terms of the patient follow up and outcome, uh, the patient tolerated the both Y90 procedures very well. And uh, she, she really had no issues whatsoever. Follow-up imaging is still pending, although alpha fetoprotein had a dramatic decrease from nearly 4,000 to 87. Her performance status remained zero. So what were the key lessons about TriNav from this case? Well, number one, it allowed for safe and effective delivery of Y90 despite this iatrogenic SMA dissection. And this procedure really would not have been possible in this case uh, without, the without the device. Second, there was improved tumoral perfusion. The TriNav allowed improved perfusion of the tumor and decreased uptake to non-target tissue, specifically the gallbladder, which I think we demonstrated quite nicely on the images. And finally, the TriNav enabled the delivery of the entire dose of the Y90 without allowing reflux into the SMA, which would have been catastrophic. So this TriNav system with this pressure-enabled drug delivery with the smart valve has been shown in multiple prospective and retrospective clinical studies as well as preclinical models to improve therapy uptake and tumoral response, as well as preventing reflux. And this is our team, and this is my institution. I want to really thank you for listening.